What's the time? Uh, I, I'd love to tell you, but uh, oh, it's 20, 20, about 11 o'clock. And what have we just spent the last six hours doing? Driving 200 plus miles to some place by junction 29 of the motorway, the M1, picking up a cylinder head. Now, uh, what happened with the last cylinder head that we sent for renovation? Well, Right, now this is the cylinder head. I've taken off the camshaft. Now that was fairly easy because it was all held on by mounts and you undo those, take the camshaft off. So that was quite straightforward. Nothing particular is holding it in place. The next challenge is the cylinder head pressure test to stroke reconditioner wants the head stripped. So that is what I'm doing now. I'm taking the valves out and uh, we'll do that now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off this inlet valve using this special tool. So how it works is the valve is secured in place by a cotter which is like a wedge to stop it slipping out. So the idea is you use this tool and it compresses the spring. You can then expose the cotter. You take that out and then you release it and out pops the spring. So here we go. Let's demonstrate this. So this is a, a one I borrowed off someone. I think I'm using this right although who can tell? Um, so here we go. So you wind it down. Oh, hang on a minute. You wind it until. Oh, hang on. I've just uh, realised that uh, what I needed to do first, beginner's mistake, is use this handle. And that stops a lot of winding, I think. I think that's the purpose of it. Who knows? But I believe so. So wind it then, and then you have far fewer turns of the matching screw. Here we go. So I'm taking up pressure. So as you can see, as you wind it, the end sticks out and there is a pin. Now by all accounts, the device is a bit of a bash because what you find is that it sticks. So let's do it. And it will probably just click anyway in a minute. Uh, let's see. It's not sounding like it's clicking particularly. But you can see there, it is about to leave. There you go, I think that's it. Uh, it's getting tense now. Oh, there you go, you can see the end sticking out. You've been a minute, it's getting quite tough. There you go, so you can see. I think, there you go, there's the little valve stem but this one doesn't look particularly uh, healthy. I'll keep winding a bit more. The other side of this is obviously on the valve and you can see there hopefully ooh, uh, that that is then able to come off. Uh, oh there you go and uh, obviously I've done it on a bit of polystyrene. There you go. Get it out. Then Wind it back, and he says optimistically, and you can then, there you go, once the tension's there. This one seems particularly stiff for some reason, uh, and then, hopefully, I can just unwind it, out pops the end, out pops the, the valve, and there you have your intake valve. Now I'm not entirely sure that all that should be there um, because if you look at that and you can see that on the camera hopefully <coughs> that seems quite a considerable build up of that's quite a thickness which suggests that that probably would mean it was very difficult for that valve to actually shut because when it fits back into the hole this is all gummed up as well so I'm not really sure how that would work. There's a lot of goo on that, so I, I'm not sure whether that didn't make a contribution to the problem. So the next stage is, of course, keeping these all correct is a good idea, by all accounts. And he says optimistic if I can get this open. So 
to put everything in the bag, order it, ordered it. There we go. And uh, let's get the potters. That's what we call them. Plop them in there. Label that with a three because it's the third one I've done. And uh, hopefully that will stop it getting all muddled up. Now, looking at the state of that, I don't really know whether we need to take those valves in to be cleaned or I don't really want to buy any new ones um, because that won't be a reasonable price these day and age. Presumably I can clean those in something, get all that gunk off, but uh, nonetheless. So that's where we are with that. So hopefully the rest will be fairly straightforward. Uh, now I've got the technique. Right, now the next thing, as well as this, because I think this is going to be uh, time consuming because we've got bits of things to contend with, but this side has uh, been repaired prior to our ownership and uh, they did a fair to middling job because obviously your hoes have to be compromised somewhere. The finish is reasonable enough, but if we look under here, you can see that there is a lot of rust. And I suspect what that's probably caused by is it had some rust originally when it was repaired. They took out the inner lining and then didn't use uh, epoxy primer on the metal. An epoxy primer is a very high adhesion prim primer and without that what happens is the water seeps from the undersurface and over time it creeps round and therefore doesn't stick properly. So we're going to have to cut or grind all that down along with all of that. But then the problem is that this uh, metallic pin finish, uh, being grey, has quite low levels of pigment in it. So therefore it's very easy for it to be off shade. Now looking at the previous repair that we did to the bumper on the front, front and rear bumpers, paint we've got is reasonable, but what I'm going to do, uh, and this is an established technique by many people who do this kind of thing, is I'm going to do the primer and grind all that down to the metal, epoxy primer, just a thin amount, high build primer to then get it the same smoothness as the adjacent finish, and then I'm going to use a bit of the base coat colour, I'm going to paint all that as it should be, but then do a fade out to the rest of the panel, and then lacquer the whole panel, so you won't be able to see where the old and the new paint join. So it's like a misting effect on the intersection of the two. And I'm going to do that on this side, which is not the paint that I've got, whereas the other side have already done the, the paint, but that's got a different reason for it. There's a, a lack of, uh, because we had to do it twice, because there was a slight issue, uh, the paint's cracked and that needs sanding down, so a similar thing will need to happen there. So that hopefully will be there, and then if we now draw attention to the bottom, and I suspect that's the same problem. Lack of appropriate primer uh, needs a proxy primer, so that needs to be all ground back, and I'm suspecting um, we're going to find some holes there. Hopefully we won't. And uh, I'm going to try a, a technique I tried on the other side, because if you weld new metal in, there's a problem in that you cause panel distortion, and you can cor cause excess corrosion on the other side because of the heat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out some, bit, some bits and I'm going to use some very high strength uh, liquid steel it's called. So it's a two-part epoxy uh, resin and it's supposed to set harder than steel. Uh, but I'm going to use that to, to stick in some extra steel and then grind it all flat and hopefully then it will be less resistant to rust than steel would be and then we can paint that again. But it's not a major undertaking to have to to have to restore that and do it again because it's in a convenient part. You can paint up to this line, they clip off very easily, that clips off, that clips off. You won't see a mismatch of this colour to that one. There probably is not going to be much of one anyway. But hopefully between those two things we should find that it works really, really well. And that, although it's quite a big undertaking, if you are paying for that, you'd probably look into the nearing four figures. Probably um, it's going to be a matter of 20 30 quids worth of materials to do that so hopefully that will that will work quite well today's task is to strip off all the plastic bodywork to uh, cope with this rust while some waiting for the head to be skimmed and uh, the biggest problem is the fact these clips which i need to remove to uh, sort this out uh, but somebody's been rather enthusiastic with the glue 
can see some of them are stuck in and they're well and fine until once somebody needs to do something about it but you can also see a lack of adhesion here suggesting that they again haven't used the proper primer i'm wondering whether to just not to take those off at all because uh, if we look at that i could mask up to that line sand this properly and then because that's under the trim it shouldn't be too bad however again you've got a lack of adhesion issue here and uh, up there as well so looks like some kind of micro blistering because the primer was probably put on too heavy and was still gassing off prior to them putting the top coat on oh well Right, I've ground that away, and as you can see, there's a hole, so that will need a plate of some description. Okay. I've um, cut out the bubbled rust with an angle grinder as best I can, and uh, as you can see there, perhaps uh, the underside where the two skins are sandwiched together was completely rusty. So, had I um, left it and just sort of scraped off and put wrist colour on it, it wouldn't have made any difference at all. And likewise, here, there is uh, obviously uh, a lot of rust underneath, and there is here. So I think the solution is to put new metal in each of these parts, and then from the underside, put some penetrative um, pro pro uh, corrosion preventer, either a very runny paint or oil. So it can creep behind and then fill up that sandwich to preclude further rust. Now obviously when you see something like this you do have um, potential for it to either have come from the other side or through sort of the rust creeping through a hole and I think in this case it's come from the other side uh, and likewise we've got the same here. So I'm going to put some new metal in those parts and hopefully we'll be in a position to uh, show you what that looks like at the end. Again, there's the rear door with that, angle, with that piece of metal rusted as you'd ex probably expect it would. Right, the next stage is I've filled in the cracks. That's uh, now reasonably smooth, but of course it's not as smooth as we'd want it to be. So I'm now going to put a, a scraping of filler over the top and uh, it's Fill up the gap nicely, and if we go over to this one, uh, then that one's nicely filled in as well. Right, the final stage is the skin of filler, and that covers up the repair to the hole. So it might be, I need another one, but that's pretty, pretty much it. What's the time? Uh, I'd love to tell you, but uh, oh, it's 20, 20, about 11 o'clock. And what have we just spent the last six hours doing? Driving 200 plus miles to some place by junction 29 of the motorway, the M1, picking up a cylinder head. Now, uh, what happened with the last cylinder head that we sent for renovation? Well, we had an email to say that there was a crack between two valves on cylinder number two. So if you've been following this, you'll notice that that's the uh, piston with all the problems. Well, one of the ones with all the problems. And it's the one where there were droplets of antifreeze on top of the piston crown. So if you remember, when we took off their head, we're expecting to see some obvious breach of the head gasket, but there wasn't, which obviously was problem number one. That was a bit peculiar. So that's what's led to the ascending the head to the engine refinish, refurbishers for pressure testing because there was potential for a crack. And that was highlighted also by when I picked the block up from the same place we've just been, the chap said, and that those heads were prone to cracking between valves. And sure enough, they contacted me a couple of days ago to say that they'd found a crack and that it really wasn't worth pressure testing because the crack was visible to the naked eye. That said, I didn't see it, but then I suppose I don't know what I'm looking for and I'm not.
not an engine refurbisher. But interestingly enough, the chap and all of these uh, places seem to be staffed by thin old men in overalls with white hair. Uh, and he said, in the 90s, they had a lot of Carlton diesel engines uh, and cracking in the, in the between valves was uh, quite commonplace. Anyway, um, I've got a second opinion because I thought, well, surely one's heard of having cylinder heads uh, welded. And uh, I had a second uh, opinion from Knights, I think Knight engine manufacturers, and they said, no, you can't weld the cast iron head between valves because uh, the, the, you don't know the depth of the crack. And ultimately, you, you could be hiding to nothing, cost a fortune, take ages, and lead to nothing. So they advised a new head. But luckily, because of the conversation I'd already had with the chap that I got the engine block from, uh, that then uh, led to an awareness that it could in fact be the head that needed replacing. So. The only irritating thing is, if I'd have known, would have saved uh, 30 pounds in fuel. Well, the average 55 pounds to the gallon in the Volvo 850 TDI. Four, four, four gallons of fuel, 30 ish quid. Um, so ultimately, I could have saved the money. But the plus side is, the head looks to be in such good condition on the surface far better than the old one, that we might not have to have it skimmed. Um, I'll have to look at that and have to give a thought to it and check how flat it is, but it was taking off an, en an engine and a car that was perfectly roadworthy, so hopefully there won't be too much of a problem with that. So whilst it's cost us £125 for a new head, it has got all the valves in it, the camshaft looks reasonable. Uh, we won't have to potentially have it skimmed and we won't have to have it pressure checked. So, so far, apart from the cost of the fuel, we're no worse off than we would have been having the old one skimmed and pressure checked. So every cloud has a bit of a silver lining. And um, so hopefully we're ready to start putting it back together again. Um, but I'll have to have a think about that. The old one had, the valves had horrible ridges on them as well and they were all horribly coked, coked up. So I'm, I'm thinking, I think really it's probably, if I'd have realised how bad the head was when I, when I picked up the engine block, I'd have had the head as well anyway. But you live and learn. So hopefully we're ready to carry on next time. I'll just show the back. Again, I think all that bubble wrap is our beautiful, new to us, head. Right, I'll update you on it slightly lighter. We get we've made a bit of progress. Oh. Mm -hmm. Right, do you want to walk through what you're doing? I'm only cleaning it, I'm not doing anything with no cap. Yeah, well. Oh. Mm. Right, I'm uh, what I'm doing now is cleaning the oil off the inside of this cylinder so that when I, I can put some masking tape to stop the bits coming through, going into the uh, into the crack between the uh that's then sort of So if you remember how bad, I'll show you in a second, if you remember how bad the three of the other cylinders were. This is a seemingly. Yeah, there's barely a. Barely any sort of corrosion in it. Of course, we've got it out. <laughs> a rug that you. <clears throat> there we go, over here. There's the alternator. Are you taking the starter motor off? Starter motor, right, yeah. Brilliant. Right, 
back in a second. Yeah, we've just, uh, we're, Darren and I have just taken off the, uh, well, Darren did, took off the camshaft and the, these bridges. And uh, I don't know if you can see inside of that, this is the new one. And it's completely, um, well, what's the word you have in the Ethan uh, not very well usable. <laughs> yes, broken. <laughs> and uh, looking at this is the old camshaft, which in think we were given consideration to using a brand new one, but it was the wrong. It's not quite fitting as well as this one. Uh, but that's the. Uh, I can almost see a face in that. Yeah, that's <laughs> how it typically is. That doesn't shock you really, but this one, uh, that would have. I mean, that's scored to high heaven. It does. And what? Yeah, I'm leaving. You know, still going, yeah. And this one's uh, scored to high heaven. Uh, presumably, if that was jiggling up and down, the camshafts can't have been activating the valves in the right way. So it must have run terribly. Uh, yeah. But let's. But uh, well, that isn't the bit we needed. The bit we needed was the uh, the cylinder head, which, by all accounts, is probably okay. Yeah. Although presumably somebody must have tried to adjust those valve clearances. <laughs> Um, with that in mind, but feel the gauge of this thick. <laughs> yeah, you'd need a tent peg as a feel the gauge. Yeah, so. Uh, oh my word. Oh well. Yes. So it's all, uh, it's all getting there. You're doing very well here. Right, should try to get something on top. <clears throat> so that wraps up this week's video all very nicely. So, what's in store for next week? Well, hopefully the gasket set will turn up which includes front and rear crank seals, valve stem seals. Without those, it's hard to get very far. Also got to um, paint the engine block because I want to be able to see any leaks or anything like that that's coming from it. And also, if you've gone to this much bother, when you open the bonnet, you want to be able to tell that you have. Um, so there's that. The, you'll have seen the door bottoms. Hopefully, I see that on Saturday, the weather is forecast to be very warm. So that would make an ideal painting day for the door bottoms and the wings, provided it's not windy. So that would be quite good. That would give us a week or so's hardening time before we might then start to put the engine back in, hopefully. So all things considered, we're not doing too bad. Uh, this one, which presumably you can see, um, it's, uh, the alternator is coming from Autodoc. I managed to work out finally which one it was. It's, um, I think it's specific to the 2.6 models with air conditioning, so it's been a pain. So that's coming. So there's lots to be, be lots of Carlton based activity that we can get on with. Yeah. Okay. And the other thing we've got to do is these pesky door trims because they can see the I'll put a closer up video the, the, uh, the oxide of the, uh, the, the aluminium metal is oxidized and blistered off. So not a difficult fix, but uh, one that'll spruce it up considerably. Now, I'll take that off here. Um, hang on. Now, a little interesting thing is on the wing, front and back uh, of the of the car, we have these little sort of they call they're called colour stripes or sports stripes. I got again. I'll put a close up video to it in, in now, um, and they are ludicrous, ludicrously difficult to get hold of. So, um, in the coming weeks, I've uh, I'm going to be in contact with a, a place that will. Because we've got a spare one of the front wing. Now, obviously, that if we've got a spare one for the left-hand side, it means we can then flip it and have one for the back hand, the back. Because um, obviously, it's the same uh, level of it's it's the same you know measurements. It's just the, the front one is ever so slightly curved, I think, um, and the back one obviously isn't. So uh, to add to that, the other thing is, it's the really tricky bit. It's the loop at the end. That's the bit that's is difficult to recreate because you can buy stripes of particular widths everywhere. But the thing is, they loop round on themselves to give a like a hand painted appearance. Uh, actually, if we thought of that option, it might be easier to have a man come and do a, a pinstripe than it would be to uh, so no to have no these recreated. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll cost up. I'll cost up the. I'll price up. How much it would be? Because obviously we need. Um, well, again, I'll put the the paint is flaking. Actually, saying that the uh, two point six might qualify for its own video. Um, oh yes. So the two point six, um, the paint is flaking on that on that side over there, um, which means that um, 
it needs to be re needs to be re sort of uh, touched up a bit. I think that's the original one, the original stripe. So on the right, this is the left hand side we're looking at. Is the original stripe. Now we have a passenger one, um, as I've said, which because I quite like the look of the stripe on mine. So as you can see, there isn't one currently. Hilarious. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna look up how to get how to get these redone, and um, if it works out well, I think I might that might be a little endeavour for us to. Uh, so if you're interested in a set, let me know in the comments or find me via the email page on my website. Um, yeah, there might be might be one of those things where the reproduction cost is the expensive bit, and you could have as many as you like made from it. Which yes. case we might as well have ten made. Because then that covers both cars for the foreseeable future. Yes. Anyway, so that's the end. We'll see you next time.